Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to talk about how to create your first pod in the Kubernetes cluster. Now, how to create a Kubernetes cluster, that is something we have already discussed in our earlier video. So in this video, we'll uh, talk about how to create our first pod. Now to create a pod, okay, so basically let's first understand what is pod, okay? So pod is a just a kind of, you can say it is a, a logical name, okay? Logical name given to your container. Okay, logical name to given to your container. And what is container? Container is basically a, a running instance of your image. Okay, and what is image? Image is basically a bundle which has your application, your uh, all the dependencies. We can say it as a libraries, and then the the operating system required. That's a bundle. Okay, that bundle from that bundle we create an image. Okay, and from that image, when, when we run this image, we call it as a container. And then for that container in a Kubernetes terminology, we give the logical name as a pod, okay? Now there is a concept of having a multiple containers into the single pod, okay? But again, that is nothing but basically we can have another container, okay? Where we can have a different image, okay? And then different application can run inside it, right? So that means, Inside a pod, we can have a two containers or multiple containers as well, like container one, container two, like this, we can have a, another container as well, right? But now we are not, right now we are not talking about multiple container uh, in the pod. Okay, let's first understand what is pod, right? So we just now we talked, pod is a logical name, okay? Given to the container and container is nothing but a running instance of image and image is nothing but a bundle of your application, right? Now, in a Kubernetes step, okay, to create a pod, there are basically two ways, okay? First one is use an imperative command, use an imperative command to create a pod, okay? That's the one way. And the second way we have is basically, we can write our own pod.yaml, okay? The, basically this, all the uh, specification about creating a pod, we write it in the YAML format. So we can write our own and then we can just apply that file so that we can create the pod, right? Now, again, we don't need to write this uh, pod.yaml from the scratch. We can basically uh, generate a template of it, okay? Then that from inside that template, we can modify the attribute that we required and then we can apply it, right? So let's see both the ways how we can create our pod. So let me go back to the cluster. So my cluster I have just now created. Let me just show you the cluster details. So I do kubectl get uh, nodes. So here you can see this is my three node Kubernetes cluster where we have one master and two worker nodes. So let me first of all show you the pod by using an imperative command. So before that, if I run the command kubectl get pod, there is no pod available in the default namespace for now. So let's create our first pod. So let me use an imperative command first. So kubectl run is a command. kubectl run is a command. Then we can give the pod name. Let's say give, the, give our pod name as a first. And then by using in hyphen hyphen image attribute, we can give the image that required to create the pod. So we'll use an Nginx, okay? Nginx is a web server and that particular image is already available on the Docker Hub. So we'll be using that image as is. So the image uh, name we have is an Nginx. And as we earlier talked, if you don't provide any a tag to the image by default, a lattice will be considered. So whether we give it a colon lattice or not, it really doesn't matter. Docker will automatically add it. And then after image, we can provide the port on which port it is running. So the uh, Nginx is a web server, it runs on the port 80. So I'm giving the port 80. So if I run this much command, this is nothing but an imperative command. As soon as I run it, you can see pod got created. If you want to see the status of the pod, you can check the kubectl get pod. You can see right now the pod status is a container creating. Basically, in the background, it is pulling the image. And once image is pulled, you can see now the pod is in a running state, right? Now, if you want to see some more information about the pod, what we can do is we can use a kubectl describe command. What you want to describe? We want to describe a pod. And what is the name of the pod first, okay? So if you run it, basically, you can see this, there, are a lot of there are a lot of information you can see here. So the name of the pod, under which namespace it got created. Then you can see on which node it got created, what is the IP of the node, right? Then this is the IP of the pod. 
then this name of the container, right? Then the container ID, the image we have used, the image ID on which port it is running. So there is a lot of information, right? And also at the end, you can see there are some event logs as well where it is saying that the scheduler has assigned this particular pod on the kind worker node. Then the kubelet is pulling the image, successfully pulled, created the pod, and then started the pod, right? So this is all these details it is showing. So while creating the pod, if there is any challenge, this is the uh, this is the location where you will see what exactly the error, like image pulling error, or the image is not available there, or you are facing some challenges in the pulling the image. So all these kind of errors, you will be able to find it in this particular details, right? But if there are e there is any issue in the application itself, okay, the code that you have written that you have bundled in the image and available on the some registry, okay. But after pulling that image, when we are creating a pod the actual application inside that it will be started, right? But if there is an issue in that application, how you can see those logs? Basically for that, you can use the QCTL logs and then the pod name. So our pod name is first. So if you run this, this is where you will be able to see the logs. But right now our pod got successfully created. So there is a no error. So application is successfully run, right? So this is how you can see the log of application and start your pod by using an imperative command. So let me first delete this pod and then I'll show you another way of creating the pod by using the YAML file, right? So how to delete? Again, very simple command, kubectl, delete. What you want to delete? We want to delete a pod and what is the name of the pod? So if you run this command, the pod will be deleted, right? So this is how you can delete. Now let's create the pod using the YAML file. So again, as we discussed earlier, you don't need to write the YAML file from the scratch we can generate a template and from that template, we can do the necessary modification and then we can apply that file, right? So how you can create that template YAML file? Basically, we have to use the same command and then we have to use hyphen hyphen dry run option. So hyphen hyphen dry run is equal to client. What does it mean? We are saying that, okay, run this command at the kubectl command line itself. Don't send it to the API server and then give me the output into the YAML format. And that is something we can store into some file. Here I'm giving the name as a pod.yaml, but not necessarily it should be a pod.yaml. It can be anything, right? So you can see the file got generated and this is how the typical pod.yaml will look like, right? Now in this, if you want to change some labels, the name of the pod, the image that you want to use or the container name, the port that we are using, or if you want to give some resources like CPU RAM, okay? All that details, if you want to customize, you can go ahead and modify it, right? And once modified, if you want to create the pod now, then you can use a command kubectl apply. kubectl apply is a command, then hyphen f to provide the file name and then the file name itself. So if I run it, you can see pod got created. If I go back and check the pod status, you can see pod get started, right? Again, if you want to see more details, you can always use the describe command kubectl describe the pod first. And if I run it, you can see it is showing a lot of information, right? So this is how you can create your pod into the Kubernetes cluster, right? So if you have any question, uh, please do write it in the comments. And if you like the video, please subscribe, like, and share it with your circle. So that's it for this video. Thanks, everyone.